You know I am, boy. You know I'm that little titty kitty, you feel me? Meanwhile, you know, sometimes I think about just covering my body in, um, in rare fur and just kind of milling around on a couple of, um, you know, titties. You know, uh, them sternum nuggets, baby. Them big dogs. So, that's where I'm at today. Oh, I want you to know that today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. And Gray Block is a beautiful pizza establishment. If you've wondered what it's like to have something Italian inside of your face, inside of inside of your freaking little flavor hole, then that's great. Then that can that can be Gray Block Pizza. They've got Italian choices for you. Gray Block Pizza, 1811 Pico Boulevard on the way to the beach in Los Angeles. Gray Block Pizza, get that hitter. Let's go. Let's go get drunk outdoors. If you got money, you can get a little bit. If you got money, get that hitter. If you got money, you can get a little bit. If you got money, get that hitter. That is North Mississippi All Stars, and uh, that's their new song, "Drunk Outdoors." And when you do that, when you do actually do that, and you drink outdoors, it's really one thing that's really that really when when I would drink outdoors in the past, that brought me a lot of joy was being able to urinate immediately. You know, inside, if you're in a, if you're in a domicile or you're in a homestead, and you have to urinate or you have to pee out, you have to usually find a special area to pee, special area to drop water. But if you're outdoors, you can piss. You can you know, you can flow out wherever. You can piss out wherever. And it's very normal. Animals will see you urinating outside and they're not kind of, you know, they're not whispering to other animals, you know. Oh, look at Gary's wiener, you know. Or he, you know, he, he, oh, you know, Tiffany has a real, you know, she has a real weak stream, doesn't she? You know, animals will not communicate with, they're not, they're not up to as much chicanery and as much, um, they're not making fun of you as much. Whereas indoors, if you're indoors, you got to pee. The dog follows you, you know, to parrot if they have a parrot. It's like, you know, looking around in its cage, wondering where you went, but secretly knowing that you've kind of snuck off to urinate. And that's one thing that I do enjoy about, uh, uh about, uh, if you are going to drink anything outdoors, Kool-Aid, water, milk. Milk doesn't make as much urine because your body steals a lot of it. But um, water, soda, pop, uh, what else? Mm, carbonated water, um, carrot uh, juice, other juices. Those things can create, you know, a full, decent blast of urine. So... Oh, good to be back in the studio. I just flew in. I got on this Nicaraguan hitter that somebody gave me. Um, a beautiful young fella. I can't remember his name. And it was him and a couple of other Raguans showed up over there. And um, this was in uh, Milwaukee, outside of that Pabst Theater. And man, it was the sweetest gift. You know, and this fella said he grew up over there in Nicaragua. And uh, and uh, it just made me think of my dad growing up and when he was a kid and what he was doing. 
And my dad said when he was young that kids over there, they had a lot of poverty. And poverty, you know, that's when you, you know, you, you, don't, have, you don't even have a wallet because there's no point in it. It's not a wallet wouldn't even be anything. It would just be not, it would just be just something like a little sack, kind of this, like a really kind of rectangle sack, because you would never have any money. And they, um, and he said, uh, and my dad said that the other children sometimes would have to eat dirt because they had so much poverty, and their bellies would get big and large. And uh, and I always thought about that a lot, you know, because I would eat dirt sometimes. I never had a lot. I would have a limited amount um, because that always was in the back of my head thinking, oh, my belly could get real large and and I didn't want to be that kind of, you know, kind of fat and dirt and have dirt in me. So, but uh, thank you for this beautiful shirt. Thank you. It was this past like nine days has been crazy. Um. I mean, you go, it started out in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. You go there, and there's just, right when I got to the casino, uh, the Wind Creek, you know, just a lot of wonderful people in the lobby and getting to meet them. And they had one couple had matching outfits, and they were, you know, and the fellow was just real nervous to meet me, and he was like kind of started tearing up and stuff. And so I just locked arms with him. You know, I locked arms with his. You know, his big, beautiful ass. And we just stood there and just kind of held each other. And that shit was, it was beautiful, man. It was beautiful. It definitely, you know, I felt like just part of the Lord's homework right there. Like something was getting done. And then what else, man? We we went there. Then we drove over to, uh, I don't even know, Philadelphia. Uh, um, I don't even know. Through Amish, we saw a couple Amish, and we didn't sneak up on them or anything. We stayed chill, looked at them from far off. You know, Ari Manis was out there with me, and he had them binoculars, and so we'd, uh, you know, we'd drop scope on some Amish and just, you know, watch them. Nice, they were nice people crossing the street is what mostly we saw them do. Um, and uh, that's it. We wanted to spend more time out there outside of Lancaster. Pennsylvania that's where the Amish are really milling around and kind of that's where you you know if you want to get a good recipe or something or that's where you kind of sneak in there and you meet a lady and you can uh you know it's hard to kiss them I think it's almost they don't you got to almost sneak up and kiss them real fast but uh and then where else we went through uh Cleveland wow that was crazy Cleveland was crazy we went out after the show, that show was crazy. It was a Tuesday night. It was almost 2,000 people. And and uh, went to Indianapolis. Then we went to Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh, that's where we went. And we went went to the bat, the football game. And the Steelers, boy, you talk about people enjoying. And you see people out there, they got a little bit of chip tam on them. Everybody's talking about chip tam over there by the stadium. Oh, you want some? Bang, bang, bang. Oh, you need some chip ham, honey. And I thought chip ham. I thought it was a guy at first. I'm like, who? Where is he? You know, chip ham. Bring, bring his ass out here, dude. I want to meet this guy. Uh, but it's a meat. It's a meat choice, and people were making it. And you saw, uh, yeah, people eating. A lot of people licking their fingers out there. Over there in Pittsburgh, they thank 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 thank. Uh, and that was probably the rowdiest crowd of the week. Was Pittsburgh? That was probably the rowdiest squad. And where else? Uh, finished off in Milwaukee and Madison, which were two of the uh, two of my two, two of the best shows. Really, I thought of, of the week. Uh, Detroit was pretty wild. So it was just so much happened at once. It was just such a crazy. You know, we got this tour bus, this real small tour bus. And it was only about $200 uh, a day rental. And Ari Man has slept in it. He's sleeping in there. And, you know, he said he wanted to, honestly, he said he wanted to touch women in there. And I told him I'd allow it, you know, during nighttime hours and as long as it was uh, consensual. 
because we don't, you know, we got enough of the dark arts going on 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 our own side of the bed. And um, and man, I think I got to, you know, there was a moment in the week where I was keyed up and excited, and then I started to like, I kind of forgot that I was, you know, that I I, I just. I just kind of lost a little bit of, uh, not focus, but I just realized, oh, I have to really, I was just having trouble, honestly, just be finding gratitude and being grateful. And I don't know why, man, it made me so, it made me mad. You know, I want to be grateful and just and feel the joy of, uh, of just every moment of, of life if I can. You know, I want to see people, you know, you know, see a couple of, you know, you might see a couple little uh, thick little fellas over there tickling each other or something or sharing a bowl or something or doing, you know, you know, you see some, uh, you know, a couple at a, a table and maybe it's their anniversary and they, you know, divvying up a couple raviolis. And I want to be I want to I want to, you know, enjoy all the moments of life. And so. uh So, yeah, really kind of after Indianapolis, I kind of had a moment of like regrouping and stuff and. And after Detroit and tried to really just say, you know, just really focus on trying to be grateful. And just, uh, because I want to feel the joys of the world, man. I really want to feel them. You know, I don't want to be. And I think I started to feel a little bit bad, dude. I was doing a little bit of masturbation this week. I don't know what happened. But something about you get into Ohio, you just start kind of jerking off. I guess I do. And I, I didn't expect it. You know, I'll watch a Browns game or something, or I'll see, uh, you know, I'll see um, the uh, the Cavaliers on TV, and I don't think about touching myself or anything, you know, being real unique with my dick or anything. But then I got into that state, and I just couldn't stop just, just doing it, dude. And I was just, I, felt, I don't know, I just... You know, had a little bit of a setback there. And once I start doing it, then it's like this downward little, you know, kind of spiral where I'm just kind of pleasuring myself and not really, but just not feeling great about it. So anyway, I mean, it's the Dark Arts Tour and sometimes the Dark Arts really bite you right in the freaking back of your nuts. You know, where nothing's ever supposed to put its teeth. And I kind of feel like a little bit of that's what happened. Um... So, with that said, man, that's, you know, I'm back. I'm back, and I'm just so thankful that so many people came out, man. It just, uh, you know, it just really just blew my mind, man. You know, and sometimes I think part of it is I just feel like I can't do enough to like no matter what I do, it's not going to be enough to show my gratitude. You know, it's like there's no way I can. I mean, I try as uh, I try hard, but it's like it's just tough. It's like, am I? How do I show my gratitude to all these people at one time? Uh, so I just want you to know that. Thank you very much. You know, and I care about the stories that I tell, and I care about the performance and. And I had a good time, man, and I hope that I can repay the favor to all of you guys uh, for coming out and supporting me and just making me feel welcome. Um, and it's quick. It's one city to the next. It goes. You know, it goes. And uh, let me think of some highlights we had. Ari got stuck at the uh, gas station in, uh, in somewhere, Wisconsin. And we left him back there. We didn't know. And a friend of mine was telling me that uh, her husband left her at a rest area one time for seven hours. She'd gotten out to urinate or whatever, and he uh, thought she was resting in the back of the camper and took off. And he left her there, and she didn't have any shoes on either. So that's pretty. And it makes you wonder, well, what kind of guy leaves his wife at a rest area? But then it doesn't make you wonder that much because I could think of a thousand guys that would do that. You know, drop Susie off over there by the freaking, by the RA. 
But then it also makes you wonder, well, what kind of lady gets out of the rest area barefoot? Where millions of people are driving by sheerly to stop and urinate on the side of the road. So it definitely seems like those people are, uh, at least they know that they are right for each other. I think that's an easy one. Oh, I saw my arch nemesis in Detroit. You know, my buddy, but also, you know. Um, Christopher. Uh, he was in Detroit, man. He was doing a college over there, and I got to go to dinner afterwards with him. We met up. And uh, Blake Griffins, the all-star, he's a basketballer, you know. And he's a very diverse man. He probably have nine different ethnicities in him. I mean, if you beat him open, the Olympics are inside of him. You know, and he's just extremely diverse man, Blake Griffins, and he, uh, and he's tall, so we have to really get close to his food to eat it. So it's very unique watching somebody of that stature, you know, come down to a little French onion soup or something, or a little salad plate, you know, but. So even that was just a joy in its own right. You know, I know I'm name dropping, but just to watch a real tall person eat. You know, you don't get to see a lot of that. It almost feels like a little bit like you're at the zoo. When you get to see a real, real tall fella have to deal with even a little dessert in Blake Griffin's hands. It looked like a little, like a magic snack or something or like a it almost looked like a pill he would take in the morning and, and and it was a muffin like dang so to watch a man of that stature just very complex it's almost beautiful to watch you almost hope, want there to be a sunrise in the background or something or the lion king playing or something it's very very unique but that was uh that was a that was a fun moment um I want to tell you this, too, that I got a show at the Wiltern in Los Angeles. That's going to be December 10th at the Wiltern in L.A., and uh, those tickets are going to go on sale uh, tomorrow. Tuesday, October 15th, uh, those tickets will go on sale, and that's tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with the code ONWARD, and tickets go on sale to the general public this Friday, October 18th at 10 a.m., Pacific Standard Time. And that show is for December 10th at the Wiltern in Los Angeles. Um, and there's no VIP uh, for that show, just general tickets. And it's going to be it's going to be an awesome night. I'm hoping to have a couple special guests pop onto the lineup with me. Um, so thank you guys for uh, for supporting me. As well, the Oxen Hill, the Maryland show, and the Sayersville, New Jersey shows. You'll get updates about those this week. Uh, locking in some dates right now. Um, yeah, and it's kind of sad to be doing so. Like some of these shows, it's like the last time that I'll do these jokes in, in uh, on stage. You know, it's kind of crazy. It's uh, it's I, I don't know. It's like almost like having, you know, you have these bits and you, you know, you have these stories and you. Uh, I don't know. I care about them. You know, I like telling them. You know, I'm grateful that, you know, I lived enough of them and was able to put them in a, some type of place, you know, or shape that I could present them to someone and have them be enjoyed. You know, a lot of people come out and you see, a, you know, you see a mother, uh, they had a mother and son that came out and this week and, and it just, man, it makes you feel good. You know, and it's sometimes even it's like, a, it's like, it's been hard for me this year to really feel a lot of stuff. I've just been so uh, almost busy, too busy to feel. And not like I want it to be that way. It's just, you know, it's just been, I don't know. It's just been a new experience. It's been a new experience of like being, having this much work to do and, and, uh, and just thank you guys for your patience while I figured it out and just continue to learn. And, uh, 
I don't know, man. I don't even know what I'm saying, really. But I don't know. And it's just been, it's been kind of a scary time, you know, like a lot's changed this year. Um, man, it's weird because it's like I don't want it to change. Like, and maybe it hasn't. Maybe I'm just feeling different on the inside or feeling strange or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely exciting um, to have more of an audience, but it's also, it's a little spooky. You know, it's a little spooky. Uh, um, because, yeah. I don't know, you just want to do, you know, you just want to treat people right. And, uh, yeah. And so having people come out, it's like, I almost wish that I could be the concierge or the, you know, the usher, right? When they walk into the theater, I could be the person that welcomes them at the door. I could be the person that sits them down. I could be the person that takes their order. I could be the person that, like, I want to be all those people, you know, I think. I want to be able to, I want to be able to make sure that it's a good experience for you. So sometimes I just feel all this, and and I, and I know that that's impossible. So it's this crazy like thing that my that my brain or that my alcoholism makes up, and just you know I have one of those brains that'll always kind of make me feel bad about stuff or make me feel like I'm not doing something. You know I got that dirty brain. I mean if you if you looked in my brain, there's definitely there's a couple sandbars in it. There's probably a clay bank. I bet there's a bit of a uh, compost heap somewhere near the back. There's definitely some birds kind of doing sex off to the side, probably. Sex birds, you know. A couple penis pigeons over there catching it. But, uh, so, but yeah, I mean, just, I, like, dude, the, Touring happens so fast. It's like people are like, oh, did you get to do this in the city? Dude, I didn't get to do anything. You know, I had two days in Cleveland were like my biggest time of peace. And one of them I got to go to CVS because I had to get some uh, minoxidil to keep my hair. And the other one, I did a yoga class there <clears throat> as well. Um... So, yeah, you just, because you get to the place, it's usually about three or four when you get into the the, the next city. And uh, and the camper was cool. One thing about the camper, you know, you just kind of can kick your feet up, listen to some tunes, be alive, have a water. They got a little refrigerator. Uh, you could try to sleep, but if you sleep in the back of a camper, every bump you hit, it lifts you in the air about eight inches. So it feels like you're just like somebody's fucking you, but it's just they're not. It's just you bouncing. It almost feels like the whole world is just fucking you kind of from the side, you know, or that's why I, I, I laid face down because I'm not if I'm because even after a while, I felt like the whole world is like kind of doing sex at, at my butt or towards my butt. So I lay face down so that, you know. If the world's going to fuck me, it's going to straight up do it at my face or do it at my front. So I can kind of defend myself against it. Because you're just in the back of that camper. You know, that's the beautiful thing about this tour bus we had. It has a kind of a camper vibe to it. And so you go lay in the back, but every bump you hit. And it, I mean, it was intense. Um... Yeah, and uh, what else? I got some time to chill. I'm getting my hair. I'm getting rehair for a station tomorrow. So a lot of people are like, what do you mean, bucko? And that's where they take care out of the back and they put it in the front. So I'm going to get that remodel job again. And this man, Dr. Cahan, over in Los Angeles, Dr. Cahan, I'm going to see him. And, and I'm intrigued. I, you know, like, I, I, you know, I just want to be preventative. You know, I want to be preventative. I like having hair. I'm not ready to be away from my hair for the rest of my life yet. I think I have like separation anxiety when it comes to hair and stuff like that. So, 
Um, what else is going on? I'll tell you this right here. You know it. That uh, you got to tighten up your grooming area. A lot of people's crotch. You see a man's crotch or whatever. It looks like it's uh, you know, an Orthodox Jewish person or something. Or it looks like a hippie. You know, it's got the long hair. You'll see a guy's wiener and it got long hair off the side. A sideburn off his nuts. And it's got some barrettes in it. Come on, bucko. What are you doing, boy? Well, support for this past weekend comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. That's right. You want to get them rubies looking classy. I mean, you want to be able to show your nuts to your damn stepmother and not have her trip out. Just have her be like, wow. Huh. If only you kept your room as clean. Uh, I've taken care of my nuts before when I was young. A man told me one time he cornered me, actually. Not even in a corner. He just cornered me out in the open. And that's a powerful man. And he said, whenever you do trim your nuts, you pull the hair away and then you clip. Don't try to clip right by that bag. Because you don't want what's in there. That's what he told me. And I remember that. And even though still I've cut my nuts open a couple times on accident, I know that I shouldn't do it. Well, Manscaped is changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 2.0. Inside the Perfect Package, you find the electric trimmer called that lawn mower. Now, real, something real shady is to take anything called a lawn mower near your junk. But this thing is waterproof and it has skin safe technology. It'll protect you from nicking that sack. You know what I'm saying? It ain't Christmas yet. You don't want to be St. Nick. You can also create less mess by trimming in the shower. Now, that's kind of sexy, too. You could even do a video. Have your son, you know, video you and give it to your wife for uh, Christmas or early Thanksgiving gift. That little freaking turkey hide or present. Uh, also, this, the crop preserver is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. Take care of your nuts, dude. They're your nuts, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Your family came out of them and you're going to fucking run around all day. They're smelling like gravy and freaking, uh, you know, and cheap uh, muscalot. It's time to get clean with this perfect package 2.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Theo at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with code Theo at manscaped.com. 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code Theo to carry your crotch and feel like a man. What if you could make your work take less time? Well, you can with Captera. Captera helps you find the right software for your business needs fast. So you can get back to business even faster. Compare thousands of software options, read reviews, and instantly narrow to your favorites. You'll have more time in no time. Get the software hitter. Get the software right now. It's the leading free online resource to help you find the best software solution for your business. If you're not sure, well, how do I make this happen faster in my business? How do I get my product created and, and get it served and, and get it shipped? How do, I, um, how do I get these facts organized so I can uh, create the best uh, piece of necessity for my um, consumers? You can do all that. No matter what kind of software you need, Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. Visit Captera, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash Theo for free today to find the tools to make an informed software decision for your business. Captera, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash Theo. Captera dot com slash Theo. Software selection simplified um what's what 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 else is popping with me man uh just it's already the middle of october you know when we stopped we were in uh wisconsin which what a beautiful state i mean just we were you know we really just winter you could feel winter you could feel this cold little little man with a dirty stick kind of poking us in our butt and kind of, you know, jabbing at our beholes a bit, you know. A cold, cold little, kind of cold, wet little hitter. That little, you know, you know, that uh, 
pocopotamus, bro. He was just jabbing at our freaking little nard hole. And um, and we stopped at a little pumpkin patch. And it was beautiful, man. They had fresh animals right there, newborn calves, fresh poop. They had fresh animal poop all over. You could step and shit for free. That was free. And then they had different pumpkins and different gourd choices. Get you one, get you a little, you get a spoonful of applesauce, half a dime. Half a dime for that little, you know, that little uh, fruit scoop hitter. And that's one thing that you got to love that about um, Wisconsin. Only in select states can you pull over on the side of the road and have somebody scoop half of a damn, you know, scoop of pureed, uh, you know, choice sweet produce into your mouth for half a damn dime. I mean, and that's one thing you got to love about America. And that's one thing I don't want to lose about this country. You know, that's one thing I do not want to lose about this country is the ability to just stop on the side of a road and find joy. And they had all kind of pumpkins, big pumpkins, small pumpkins. They had the pumpkin patch, you know, and they got the big old one. They got one off to the side as a little freaking needle in its, uh, you know, in its um, carriage. There's, you know, because everybody's suffering some. And, and just the whole, they probably had about 6,000 pumpkins. And about 400 of them were uh, special needs, it seemed like, or had, you know, emotional issues or something. Very, and it was interesting to see what kids would pick a what pumpkin. You know, some kid, they wanted the nice looking one. Some kid would pick kind of a little rescue pumpkin. You know, the one, you know, it's kind of shaped a little, maybe like a S a little, and it, it won't even stand up right. It just keeps falling on its side. You see a little girl go get that one. Or you'd see, you know, some asshole kid would just go over and just kick a couple pumpkins, some complete asshole, some little Antifa kid or whatever this guy was or whatever, you know little freaking vegetable Nazi or something. You know, we just, but it was interesting to see and watch how the different children got the different one and what they chose. Made me feel like, uh, I don't know, just made me feel real human. Just walking around looking at vegetables with strangers. Uh, and just nice to just be out in the countryside and just see... I mean, in L.A., you don't see anything. You don't, there's no countryside. There's no birds. I, I mean, I don't even, I, I don't know if I've seen a bird here in almost maybe five or six years, you know, except for the scooters. So my brain's a little warped. Um, but, oh, one city that really blew my mind, Indianapolis, beautiful city. I didn't realize it. I just, I'd never been, you know. I'd only been to the airport and drove in over to um, Bloomington. But it was just, you know, we got some scooters and we're scooting around. And the police, some guy had gotten hit by a truck or something and he's laying on the ground. And so I pull up, I'm kind of peeking at him, you know, and just, because I always wanted to see a body and see if you see something leave out of it. You know, like at the end of a moment, you know, when at the end of life. So this, um, and then some ki some guys pull up and they say, hey, you know, gang, gang, bro, we're going to your show. And they're like yelling at me. I think they've been drinking. They were nice guys, but, I, and they're like, hey, Tia. And I'm like, uh, and I'm the guy's literally, some guy's laying there, just been hit by a truck and there's two police officers over him. Um, and it was just so awkward. I'm like, guys, I can't yell over this guy if this guy's dead. You know, let's move up about 10 feet and, and discuss it. Uh, so that was probably, you know, that was pretty interactive. One of uh, a nice experience. What else? I'm trying to think that was. Oh, after the show in Indianapolis, there was a, gr a gang, a grip of people outside of the uh, outside of the venue waiting to say hello. And that was really touching. Because that was one show during the week I'd, I was really having a tough time. And, uh, and 
you know, I was just having a tough time and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I got outside and, and there was a lot of people there just waiting to say, Hey, you know, and, uh, just good people. A friend of mine passed away actually on Tuesday night and I didn't find out till Wednesday morning and, uh, it's nobody you guys know. It's a guy who's struggled with addiction. And man, it just really broke my heart this week. You know, it just broke my heart. Just, uh, you know, this dude, he was just a real, real loving guy. And he was just trying really hard to, um, to kick the habit and to get, you know, to get better. And, and he did any, any, any lost. He didn't. You know, and I hope he's better now. I hope he feels better now. Uh, wherever he is, it just, it was a, you know, it was just, it was just sad, you know, because like addiction is something you, it's an individual thing, but it's a, it's a human condition that's, it's a sourness that's seeping into people. And, um, man, this guy, the most charismatic person that maybe I've ever met this fella. And he just couldn't feel how much people love him. I don't think he could feel it. And, uh, and I hope he can feel it now, man, wherever he is, you know, he's just a special dude. So that, so that going into that day and that night, that's, uh, we stopped and got some bags a couple uh, bags of fluid and um, and just some tough, just, you know, some tough runs. But let's get into some calls that came in. You know, let, let me quit thinking about myself here and let me think about you guys and see what's going on in your world. Thanks for being a part of uh, of this past weekend. Gang, love you guys. Take care of yourselves, huh? Hey, Theo, this is uh, Greg from Indiana. So uh, me and my friends went out and caught your show. Dude, you did phenomenal. I actually just wanted to call and tell you. So I was at uh, work the other day, and i just been kind of in this, like, rut at work. It's not a bad job, but I just really want to get out of it. So I was catching up on some of your podcasts, and um, you said something that, like, resonated with me. You know, you said, nothing changes if nothing changes. I thought about it, and I went home, and I applied for a job I'm probably not qualified for. But I was like, I'll just take a shot. <laughs> And the next day, I get a uh, call from him. I have the interview. It goes well. She says she's going to set me up with an uh, in-person interview. Never even had it. They uh, email me a few days later, and I got the job. So now I'm going to be doing a job that I think I will <laughs> appreciate more and enjoy more, and I'll be making double the money that I'm making now. Gang. Bro, that's awesome, man. That's really great. Uh, congratulations for trying something new. Yeah, it's crazy to sometimes think like what can happen if we decide I'm going to see what happens when I decide that I am qualified. What happens when I decide for myself that I'm going to do something different? You know, one thing, you know, Jocko Willink was in here last week and one thing that's really been pressing with me that we discussed is staying motivated. And I have been finding myself more motivated even when I do not feel like doing something to do it. That my brain doesn't dictate how. My brain does not get to choose. It choose it, my brain can feel a certain way, but it's not going to choose how I behave all the time. I just can't let it do it anymore. I'm going to have setbacks, I know. But if I'm feeling bad, that doesn't mean I'm doing bad. That doesn't mean I am bad. That doesn't mean that I can't still take some action. Because, yeah, nothing changes and nothing changes, man. You know, we'll sit around forever wondering, well, what if I, you know, what if I was a dog catcher? Would I be the best? What if I was a, you know, what if I'd worked on that, you know, at a, a, avalanche, you know, search you know, searching for avalanches and 
predicting them or a what is it called a uh geologist who would i you know would i be able to do it would i you don't know until you say yeah i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna take action nothing changes if nothing changes man and i'm not preaching at you i'm just uh I just want to remind you because, you know, I've spent a lot of time in my life sitting around wanting things to change. Um, and not being able to make them change and, and not thinking I could. And I wish somebody had told me that earlier sometimes. That in order for something to change, there needs to be change. Um. I'm proud of you, man. I'm happy for you, bro. That's very exciting to hear. And that makes me feel good. You know, it makes me feel good. And thank you guys for coming out in Indianapolis. And I needed to hear that somebody came out and had a good time at that show. Because that one and the Detroit one were the two this week that I felt... I don't know. I just felt a little disconnected, man. Uh... You know, I think it just breaks my heart sometimes that that something like as beautiful as human beings are that we're dying because of something as as like dirty and preventable and And sad as uh, as drugs and as addiction. You know, it just breaks my heart. It just breaks my damn heart, bro. It breaks my heart. Um, and just makes me want to work harder to be part of the solution in the world. You know, it makes me. It just makes me want to take care of myself so that I can. Just so I can be there for somebody else if they need it. Not even know if I can be, but just so that there's a chance that I can. You know, it just makes me sad, man. Uh, but knowing that there's people out there who are making changes. And, uh, and who are coming out and enjoying the show. That's exactly what I need to hear from me. And thank you for sharing that with me, brother. You guys be good to yourselves, man. Gang, brother. Let's hear the end of your call. I'll listen to the end of it here, too. So So I just wanted to thank you, man. You know, you inspired me. I know and it makes you uncomfortable to hear sometimes, but you really did. And you do that to a lot of people. Keep doing your thing. All right, and you have a blessed day. Gang. Gang, bro. You could tell Indianapolis. One thing you could tell, man, a lot of really nice people there. Probably the most... Just well-behaved, chill. Not well-behaved, but just respectful kind of vibe out there. Um, oh, here was one thing that was funny. In Detroit, the guy right up by the stage, security, he was listening to music on his phone, on speaker. It was the most Detroit thing ever, dude. It was like some rap music. Shit was hilarious, bro. All right, let's take another call that came in here. The hotline, as always, is 985-664-9503. And, uh, yeah, I know I'm all over the place today. Uh, it's been a crazy year, man. This has been a crazy year. You know, I think at the beginning of the year, I felt, I knew so much more, like kind of felt like I was in my, in my skin. And some days, these days, I feel like I'm out of it. Um, but it's an exciting time. We got Halloween coming. We got Thanksgiving. This is a great time uh, to to be loving. This is a great time to uh, recreate a personal relationship with the feelings that I want to have more of in my life every day. Let's take this call. Here we go. Okay. Yo, what up, Bill? This is Isaiah from California. I was just listening to a podcast about you having a vision about your pops. Yeah, how you guys are just hanging out and everything. Yeah, thanks for calling, Isaiah. I appreciate you calling. Yeah, my um, 
Yeah, it was so wild. I, it's so funny. I was listening back to that part of the episode, and it was so wild that I, I I was in Maui and I had a dream that my father was in, you know, and I hadn't seen him in so long. Um, onward. I just want to let you know, man. Shit, I lost my dad about five years ago, six years ago. Well, my dad was murdered. So, should I try not? To- Damn, man. I'm sorry to hear that, brother. I'm sorry to hear that. Onward. I to even keep track of it because that shit still hurts. But, man, when I'm feeling down, dude, I get those same dreams, dude. I'm just chilling, talking to him. He's giving me advice. And the crazy thing about it, too, is that when we're talking, dude, it's like real-life situations, shit, some shit that I'm dealing with, you know. And I got two boys I need to look after, too. So, shit, me being a father, learning everything, I got to talk to my dad sometimes and then... When I go to sleep, man, I get to see him. So all I want to say is, dude, you're not alone. Uh, there's people out here going through the same thing. Have a good one. Later. Gang, bro, thank you uh, for that call. Um, yeah, there's some... Uh, I wonder if there, we were missing such a big... element of existence that we don't realize how much access we have to people that have left before us you know our parents or um our children um people we care about anyone you know anybody frederick Douglass or damn uh lynn bias or Mark Spitz or anybody, Thomas Jefferson. Um, It's funny. It's like how much, like how close are we to the spirits? And there, and we didn't even, and we don't even, might not even know. I mean, electricity existed and we didn't even know, isn't that, you know, and it's such a huge thing. I wonder if there's going to be another like, oh, there's this field right here where they all are. And how to access it is like this. And we, we just didn't know we were too busy out here working with our hands on our outside instead of working with our our spirit or something or using the hands that are inside of us, whatever those are, our feelings or something to, you know, to access our loved ones. Um because it's you know we we are you and i are we are pieces of our father we're pieces of our parents we they are technically still alive we are half of them so yeah it would seem like the bridge for them to communicate would be decently strong um and I just wonder if we're if we just don't know of this whole entire other electricity that's around or that exists that's this field where we can uh, where we can communicate with others who have gone before us and those who are going to come down the line. Yeah, but it was beautiful, man. When I think back on it, it was cool to see my dad just having just being himself. Yeah, just being himself, man. And thank you for sharing, man. And I'm sorry that that happened to your father. You know, I'm really sorry. I'm I'm grateful you have a couple of sons, though, that you can be a father to. And I bet it's really, really painful at times. But I bet it sometimes it's uh, you have a special inspiration that the rest of us uh, can't experience. Uh, gang, brother. Um, let's take this call that came in. Theo Matio, what's up, brother? It's Connor from Key West. Hey, Connor down there in Key West, and Key West is a real hotbed for, um, you know, a lot of homosexuality down there. If you'd like to meet a man or woman, and you are one of those, and you want to meet the same. Also, a lot of, uh, they got a lot of unique birds down there in Sunburn as well. Uh, beautiful area, beautiful. Let's hear more. Thank you for calling, Connor. How's it going? I just got one question for you. Halloween's coming up, and I was wondering, hey, man, what brother. are you going to go ask? 
Me personally, I was thinking about a, a like maybe like a coked up Cuban dude. I think that's kind of funny sometimes. Might not be though. Or I was gonna go as like my mom or something and freak her out, gang gang. Oh, that's an interesting choice. Um, that's a really interesting choice. What am I gonna go as? You know, I thought about um, going as a crab, maybe a land, maybe land crab, something. Not crab meat, but, you know, the the living animal. And I thought about, because um, I don't want to do like a wet crab, because you have to wet, you know, I don't want to be like having to spray water on myself all night or do anything like that. So I thought about a crab. I thought about being a rocket, doing like a rocket out- outfit. It's kind of where I am right now. I guess I haven't really started to put too much thought into it, but I do want to. Uh, I do want to now that you brought it up to me. You know, and this actually reminds me. This reminds me of a call that came in. Let's uh, let's uh, we're going to go to that now. This call came in. Was it last year or the year before? About a uh, a fellow and a Halloween costume, and I and um. And this is, uh, and I ran into this guy actually in, I want to say it was Kansas City maybe, but uh, this was about him and about his father since we've been talking about fathers and stuff. Let's uh, let's go to that call right now. Hey, what's up, T.O.? It's Brad from Kansas. Hey, uh, I was listening to this past weekend um, when you were talking about Halloween and how you love it. And Halloween actually used to be my favorite holiday, man. I, I loved uh being able to put on a mask and just get away, and everyone seems so happy. But my dad actually passed away on Halloween. This will be the second Halloween without him, man. And I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to understand how I get that back. You know, how I get that love for Halloween back because you know every time it comes around, I think about my old man and just what he's doing and where, you know, how, how he'd be proud of me, man. And, well, I'm sorry to hear that, man, about your father. You know, uh, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a tricky deal, I think, being alive because it's not going to last forever, you know. And I think you have a really unique opportunity. I see here. You know, your father passed away there on Halloween, and what you could do is you could dress up like your dad. Have you thought about that? You know, to really. You could be him. And for one night on the tank, you know, for one night of the year, take him out and just, you know, enjoy the world as if you're him. And I'm not saying go visit people and surprise people or something like that or stop by, you know, I wouldn't even tell your mother or anything like that. I think this would just be something for you and him to have together. But if you were to dress up like your father... You know, you maybe could drive by some of his old friends' houses or, you know, maybe drive or, you know, or go by the school that he used to go to or something. You know, take his spirit for a walk, if you will. Um, Because I think there's something special about Halloween. You know, it's a time, you know, the way that that the different chasms of existence and, 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 and life and outer space and mother nature and Pandora's box, you know, and God's bonnet and all of that, the way they all fit together, it's very much like a Rubik's cubes and a Rubik's cubes is a shape that doesn't want to show you who it really is. And there's something special on Halloween when all those, when everything kind of lines up and you can walk through from the beyond to the great beyond and to the before and you can meander back and forth like you're just in a big house party. And time just kind of shows up and just, you know, it doesn't keep track of itself. And a full moon comes out and there's wolves. And it's a very, very unique time. And it's a very much, it's just a water slide of just existence and possibility. It's like the universe just like loses its memory for just a second and forgets where it's going for just a second. And there's something special that can happen on Halloween. And so that's why I think it would be very interesting if you maybe dressed up as your father 
and went out and about. Now, if you wanted to get real fun with, you could stop by, you know, maybe an ex-girlfriend of his his house. Or if he used to play cards with his buddies, you could set up a game and meet all of them and do that. You know, and really live it out. But I think that would be a special way that you could honor him, man. Wow, and that's pretty powerful right there. You know, that's just... uh, And I'm not saying it because, you know, I was talking about it. I just... You know, it just, there's, I mean, it's just, we don't know if there's this other, what if there's just such a fine line between us and and those who have gone before us? Just like a mirror, just a, we don't, they're just right there and we just, we don't have the map yet to access them. You know, we, and if we could just find a way to, I don't know, I feel like we're going to start to develop a lot of new senses. You know, the fact that we only have five senses for such magnificent creatures as humans seems very limited. I bet we could do more than five. Uh, let's take another call here. Uh, and also, let me tell you that this past weekend is brought to you by Skillshare. If you don't have any skills, well, change it. Because it's time. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, um, marketing. You'll discover ways to be creative, curious, get weird. Ooh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm on Skillshare, honey. Let's, let's get all of our panties off. Take, closes, take classes in social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing, even illustration. Oh, yeah. Draw it, baby. Draw it. Whether you're looking to discover a new passion or start that side hustle, Skillshare is there. You want to learn graphic design? You've been saying you do for like years and you haven't and you're not doing it and you're just driving your truck and it's wasting gas. Try Graphic Design Basics, Core Principles for Visual Design, one of the most popular courses. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes. Go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. When it comes to meat, you want to get that, that fancy meat. You want to get that decent meat. Look, I've had meat in my mouth that was real suspect, okay? Especially over there in Pittsburgh, dude, down there by the stadium, dude. You know what I'm saying? I've had a couple cuts of chopped ham that, whoo, man, I mean, I don't even know who they came off of. Quality meat matters. Even if you see an animal in the field, a cow animal, you say, damn, if they got its hair nice and stuff, you say, I'd like to have a steak out of that, out of that one. You see another one over off to the side and he's, you know, he's barely, you know, making it through half of a um, cream soda or something that he's got t- taped to his hoof. You know, and he, he, he hasn't been brushing his hair and he also didn't finish school. You'd be like, ah, that guy could keep his meats. Not everyone even has convenient access to high quality meat. So it doesn't matter what the meat is or what it's doing. Sometimes you don't have access. Luckily, there's Butcher Box. Butcher Box believes everyone deserves that high quality humanely sourced meat i've got butcher box and let me tell you this i'm meated up to the gills i got so much dang meat boy dude i'll shake your hand and leave a half a prime rib in it on accident no more trips to the grocery store to get that meat meat you get better affordable meaty selections every month butcher box Ships a curated selection of high-quality meat right to my home. Meet me at the mall. Mm. All meat is free of antibiotics and added hormones. Of course it's free of antibiotics. What do you think the meat has uh, the flu? What do you think the meat's uh, on doxycycline? Each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat. Enough for 24 individual meaty, meaty meals. With Butcher Box, you get the highest quality meat around. Just $6 a meal. 
With Thanksgiving right around the corner, now is the perfect time to give ButcherBox a try. Sign up today and get a free turkey. Plus $20 off your first box. Just go to butcherbox.com slash Theo or enter promo code Theo at checkout. That's butcherbox.com slash Theo or enter promo code Theo at checkout for a free turkey and $20 off your first box. Get some meat. And they got the meat, man. Dude, my freezer is so meated out. It's fun because I leave in the morning, throw some meat to thaw out, get home, be like, dang, edible meat. Uh, but that's what I'm going to be for Halloween, man. I think maybe a wet crab or dry crab. Let's take another call right here. Uh, what's up, Theo? It's, uh, it's Zach. Called in yesterday telling you that I was on my way to go talk to my girlfriend's father. Oh, yeah. Zach, was a, you, you were a, talk about uh, you were applying for that job, man. I don't think Cap Terra could help you find any solution to uh, you had to ask that man for the for the lady's uh, hoof in marriage, Paul, hand in marriage. Onward. Taking her hand in marriage. If this is my recap, I felt like I should call back and tell you how it went. He, you know, it went really well. It was respectful. The family they complimented me a couple times, which was really nice. Everybody needs that every now and again. But yeah, he basically said that I, yeah, but I'm all right. I've got his, I've got his blessing. So I ended up driving it was in Memphis, and I ended up driving back to Nashville where my brother lives. And my dad was there, and all of us kind of got a little bit shammered, you know. After it, uh, my dad was throwing them back. My brother, and, uh, it was just a good time, good fellowship, good community uh, with the boys. And so, uh, anyways, man, appreciate you. Uh, keep it up. Okay. Gang, brother, get out there, man. You're going to make a woman a decent man. Or these days, who knows? You might have to wear a dress or whatever, and your wife might beat you. But no matter what, you you went about it the professional way. You ask the daddy, hey, let me get that trim for life. And dads, a lot of times, sometimes they know it's the right man. Sometimes I've had a woman's dad say, hey, look. Get take this little bitch off my hands, you know. And I say, whoa, 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 brother, dude, we I just met you, man. We're to Seven Eleven right now, dude. You know, so it's you know it's a unique. There should be a website out there for dads just trying to get rid of real salty little daughters, those little saltine crackers, you know, those little uh, spoiled fruits. But I'm glad that you got one, man. And I hope that you uh, you guys find a little bit of love, dude. I hope you guys tickle each other until you just bust all over each other. Praise God, brother. Thank you for calling in and giving us that follow-up as well. Let's take another call here. The hotline is always 985-664-9503. Thank you guys for being here uh, on this Welcome Back episode here, gang. Hey, what's going on, Theo? This is Griffin from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh- Thanks for calling, Griffin. And man, Charlotte is Charlotte is a beautiful city, and there that um that Carolina Panthers team is doing well over there with uh with Mister Allen. They got a new quarterback over there, Mister Keith Allen, doing it, doing it, throwing it long and doing it, and being wild and stuff, and looking sexy as fuck, boy. Sorry, that was a typo, dude. Looking like he's playing well. Sorry, onward. Uh, the reason I'm calling is my girlfriend just recently broke up with me relationship three and a half years and oh i'm sorry to hear that man that's a hitter gang it's been about four weeks since she did it and you know i'm having a real tough time dealing with it um it's just hard to know that the reason she's leaving is you know partially my fault um i didn't put enough into the relationship and she gave me second chance after second chance and and it's just real hard knowing that the one person that you want to be with doesn't want to be with you anymore. And uh, I was just wondering if you had any advice on how to deal with it. Sorry, I'm getting choked up right now, but it's, it's hard to talk about. But um, I just needed to know if you had any advice on what I should do, you know. 
I appreciate it, man. Love you. Love you. Love you too, man. Uh, thanks for calling in. Oh man, that's such that's a that's a tough one. Because you know you you know, especially if she says she's giving you these second chances and she brought it to your attention and you, and you just kind of kept with some of your you know your behaviors. I mean that some of the truth is that you just you weren't ready. You know, you can't be someone that you just can't be right now. You can't do it. It's impossible. You know, you can't, you know, this, I mean, here's the thing. It seemed like you weren't, you were not going to make any changes to make yourself fit with her. You weren't going to, you weren't going to, it sounds like you were not going to do that. You know, it, it wasn't happening. And that's okay. It just, it, it wasn't happening. So it sounds like the only way that you guys would have a chance to fit together well is if, you know, you were different. So I bet there will be a time where you will have another opportunity. You know, I noticed that with love that's really strong or love that that there's some real basis to. A lot of times you get that another opportunity. You know, that person sees you deeper than you can see yourself. And so at that time, you may be a person that can take on a relationship and take on take it on well and show this woman the respect that she deserves. As much as you probably don't want to hear it, man, it's probably for the best right now if you're not able to be the man you want to be for her that you're not or with her because then you would just be continuing to solidify the idea that she already has that you're not the man. So now you get a, a chance to step away. And I it's painful, bro. Dude, I smoked a bunch of damn freaking Newports. I was blowing Newports, bro, laying on the porch swing, and that fucking thing broke one night. And I had a damn glass of milk out there. I was doing, uh, you know, 1% in Newports and stuff. This one I was really, you know, lifting heavy and doing steroids and stuff. But I was doing 1% in Newports, and the swing broke. And I broke that glass, that milk glass, dude. And a little shard of it came right up in between the, the boards on the, or the, um, the little uh, pallets on the swing and nipped me right in the ass, boy. I mean, I'm just my ass bled, brother. My ass could bleed. I remember that. My ass could really, really bleed when I was younger. Um, but uh, but I think you'll have another opportunity. And, you know, it's hard sometimes when people that we care about or that we kind of put us in our place a little or, you know, change is kind of scary. Change is scary. You know, but I think it's, it can be good. This is just, this is the toughest part of it you're going through right now. You know, that separation and all the comfortable, you know, you had things really the way you wanted them. They were comfortable and, you know, and now... You know, it's, it's it's funny when we don't treat someone right and then they're gone. You know, it's funny. That's when you realize how much you miss them, you know, how much you cared. And sometimes some of us are the type of people that we have. Somebody has to leave us for us to know. Well, I'm sorry that this happened, man. I know it's probably not fun to deal with. Um. But just keep, just stay, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You know, everything will be okay. Take care of yourself. Um, don't be alone too much. And, and this person loved you, you know, this person cared about you. So that's, you're obviously someone that can be cared about. You're someone that people want to care about. 
And I think you'll have another chance with this person. I think you just got to let it play out. You know, I wouldn't put too much pressure right now. I think, uh, but life is long, man, and the story has many turns. So let's see if you guys, y'all you, might pop up in a sentence again. Y'all might have a new new paragraph right around the corner. But whatever is around the corner, it needs to be new because whatever you were doing now is not working. If you guys are just hitched back up now, you're going to be the same old dog. So, so let this be a, you know, let this, it's going to hurt, but feel some of those feelings. Feel what it feels like. Feel what's making you think. You know, uh, and be brave in it. Be brave in it, bro. Be brave in it. You know, this is your Vietnam, brother. Let's take one more call. The hotline is always 985-664-9503. You know, we're all just people just trying our best. And I'm happy to be part of this group. Thank you guys for supporting me. What's up, Theo? <clears throat> so... I recently moved my boyfriend into this house with my parents. Okay. Risky move. Onward. They don't live together, but my parents helped me move him in. And there was this giant hole in the bedroom floor. This house is like all kinds of fucked up. There's holes everywhere. And this hole was particularly large and particularly deep. And while my dad was trying to fix the hole, um, he texted and said, uh, I found out that this hole is where the past owners used to shit and piss. So now that I'm going to move in the house in a couple of years and uh, I'm going to sleep in the, in the fucking poop room where these people used to shit and piss. There's that. Never going to forget that one. Pretty fucking disgusting. But um, I just thought you should know that. Maybe give me some advice on how to fucking forget about that. So thank you for all you do. Um, gang, gang. Well. I mean, it almost goes full circle because I was saying that one of the beauties of being outdoors is probably to be able to, you know, exonerate yourself of of uh, urine and feces wherever you want. Be natural out there and just flow whole right under the yard or whatever. Um, I mean, what, what what's going on? What are you guys? I mean, who's shitting in their room? What are you guys doing over there? That's the first thing I would ask. And what does your boyfriend have to do with it? You guys move this guy in? It kind of seems, it seems, you know, I think you, people have shit everywhere. If you had a map or whatever, or if they had ghosts or whatever from bowel movements and people's urine, they'd be everywhere. You know, a lot of people think that a lot of, uh, Dude, I'll tell you this story. When I was a kid, dude, I took a little duty out of my diaper or out of my pants, probably. I was thinking I was about seven. Put it into my sister's pants, bro. So, you know, it's, uh, you just got to do your best, really. You got to do your best and, um, and yeah, fucking put some carpet down or something. Jesus. Dude, animals have been shitting everywhere. Dude, a bear could eat you and, sh and, and do, and duty you somewhere by this interstate and you'd be a little duty. So it's, um, sorry, this whole story's got me. I don't know what to do, but I think, yeah, just pay attention to, you know, like, I, I just, I don't even know where to take this at where. But that's what I'm saying, dude. Urinate outdoors. What lazy bastard is just c cutting a hole into the floor of their room and doing poops in it? That's, I mean, that is lazy. So hopefully you guys got a good deal on the house. One more call here. 985-664-9503. Thank you guys for being a part of my life today. And, uh, and thanks for not giving up on me on this tour when I went back out and I planned on the, doing the film doing a movie and then change the mind. Um, and I was just, you know, I'm just excited to get to bring this show. A few more places, man. We get to go to Europe and uh, a few more reschedules here in the States. And then it's going to be, uh, I don't know, it's going to be a little bit bittersweet. Onward. 
Hey, what's up, Theo? D to the Izzo. This is Brendan from Wichita. You know that Wichita. What's up, Wichita? Yeah, I like it over there. It's Barry Sanders country. They have Barry Sanders Park over there, and that's where he used to uh, play football as a youth. Onward. Yeah, you know, need some help. You know, my dad texted me this weekend. I'm having a child, and uh, he said that him and his uh, wife, who is not my mother, uh, don't feel comfortable uh, coming to the baby shower because, you know, last year at a beer festival, my dad may or may not have tried to have sex with uh, my girl's best friend who's putting on the baby shower. So, uh, you know, I told him just be an adult and get over it, bro. Um, but, you know, just wanted to know your advice on what I should, uh, what should I do. Thanks, brother. Take care. I think you should invite him again. If he says he can't make it, then let that be his choice. Tell him you still love him and that you're un- you understand. It's going to be tough, maybe a little. But now if he does decide to come, then you guys should do a game where he has to like, where somebody has to reveal a secret about somebody else in the room or something kind of crazy or you know, like seven seconds in heaven or whatever it is called or um, or do something, you know, put sugar in each other's mouths or something so that, that way they have to interact. Uh, I think that that would be fun. It's pretty deviant, but that should be fun. Damn, your dad's a G out there, huh? Trying to holler at your lady's, ch- at your lady's friend. Dang, a savage, brother. But love can get us, man. You never know. Love comes in all shapes and sizes. You know, but, but yeah, he should, he should not, I, I, well, I don't know what he should do. He did what he did. So yeah, you could tell him, hey dude, man up. If you're going to hit on her, at least come over here and hit on the fucking zygote that's inside of my wife's body for an hour and a half because that kid needs some love as well. So if you're willing to hit on uh, Chandra or whatever over there at the picnic, then come over here and, li- and hit on this freaking big seed I got growing. Um, but damn, dude, that family sounds awesome. I'll say that. Because, man, you got to have some fun. You got to have some fun in the family. And people have been having sex since the beginning of time. You know, there's drawings on cave walls of people fucking. So, you know, so you know they were, you know, but all right, man, we did it, man. We made it to the end of today, to the end of this episode. You know, a lot of feelings out there, a lot of people going through stuff. This is a time of year when there is, uh, when there's a lot of spirits in the air, when the leaves are changing, when we're changing. When there's opportunity to shift. And we have to know, you know, is this something real that I'm grasping onto? Is this just a ghost? What's going on? But I think one thing I'm going to try to do is just, just stay excited about it, whatever it is. If the choices I'm making, if I don't know if they're great or I don't know if they're correct, at least if I stay excited and hopeful... And even if I'm going down a wrong path, man, I'll be excited while I'm headed down it. And you throw enough joy on a wrong path, man, and it just might turn into a, it just might turn into a damn staircase. You know, it just might take you to a, might take you to the place where you, where you, where exactly where you need to be. You know, might turn into a, Into a direction of good. So I'm going to try to stay excited. It's a good time of year to be excited. You know, it's a good time of year to be forgiven. It's a good time of year. You know, there's things in the air. There's other elements. You know, the spirits are waiting right behind these moments next to us. And we don't have all the passcodes and stuff yet, but they're there. They're right there. And that's, uh, that's pretty cool. 
You guys be good to yourselves. Uh, you deserve it. And let's get lead out today uh, with a little Bishop Gun, Alabama. Saving souls in Savannah And the Lord was sending her, her to Alabama, Alabama. Drying out in the slammer, Lord, I hope I don't die in Alabama. 